Whenever you're testing a PCM, visually checking the PCM's connector will help identify many problems. Now we know this is not a Ford computer that you're looking at, but we had to show it to you anyway. The corrosion on this connector caused the vehicle to stall at every stop, so don't overlook the obvious. Now look for pins that have been bent or displaced. Now Ford doesn't bend and displace their computer pins that easily, but they can get pushed backwards. This displaced pin on this computer caused a no spark condition. A technician missed the corrosion on this GM connector. We couldn't believe it. It caused a no spark condition. So do the obvious. Do your due diligence when you're doing PCM testing. The PCM recognizes cylinders by comparing the cam and the crank. In this example, the crankshaft in the yellow has a signature in it. The camshaft in the green goes high then low. When those two match, the computer knows that he's on cylinder number one. So when testing PCMs, you have to ensure that you have a good cam and crankshaft position sensors. If one or both of these signals are missing, test a sensor, look at the circuits, you need to determine the problem, make the repair to the circuit, or replace the sensor before continuing on testing this PCM. Now, you got here. You got the PCM testing because you were testing the ignition system's circuits. That means we assume that B plus and coil resistance have been checked and they're normal from this point on. So the PCM is going to ground the ignition coil to turn the ignition coil on. If current draw is lower than normal, you can suspect the PCM. Here's how you want to do that. Compare all coil currents to each other. If you have a six cylinder, compare all three coils. A bad PCM driver is going to only affect one of them, not all three of them. If all coils have low current, check the PCM's ground. Stay with us. We're going to do that in a second. Use the schematic to determine when the power circuits are supposed to have B+. For example, pin 55 is B plus all the time. If B plus is missing, check for an open circuit or replace the fuse. Pin 71 is B plus when the ignition is in the run position. If B plus is missing here, check for B plus out of the power relay. If it isn't present, check for B plus at the input to the power relay. If it isn't present, check the circuit or replace the fuse. If it is present, check the control side of the relay, the power relay, for B plus and ground. If it's normal, replace the relay. Pin 4 should be plus when the ignition switch is in the start or crank position. You can see why you must have a vehicle specific schematic to do these tests. If B plus isn't present when the ignition switch is in the start or the crank position, 4 pin 4, check the circuit for an open or replace the fuse. Test all PCM grounds by measuring voltage drop to battery negative. Voltage drop should be under 50 millivolts. That may be a lower figure than you're used to. The specifications that the manufacturers give you are usually higher. The reason we are so critical is when the computer is turning on an ignition coil that may exceed 7 amps, a bad ground, a slightly bad ground, can be exaggerated. And when you're testing them with a voltmeter, you may miss that. So we make our specification cover all possible PCM ground problems. Never replace a PCM without testing its powers and grounds.